There we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Pagano. We have Susan Hum and Renee Bird here. We're with the Global Women Talk. So we're going to have a really interesting discussion on social media. And um, a couple of our other um, uh, uh, talk show gals are maybe joining us a little bit late, but we're going to go ahead and get started and have a good conversation and talk about everything that, that women need to know or what women need to hear. So, um, and it can be anything on the social media subject. Okay. So anyway, um, enjoy our conversation. So Susan, I'm going to turn it over to you because I know you're biting the tongue here to, to say something about social media really quick. So. Oh gosh. Well, thanks Mary. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because I, I really was looking forward to this talk because um, so many of my clients suffer through what they see in social media and versus what they see in real life, which is themselves. So we are bombarded. It doesn't matter what age group we are, whether we're born into social media or whether in my age group, I wasn't born with social media, but it affects us, right? Everything we see out there, everything that's messaging us to take action is affecting us on such um, a, a subliminal level, right? And I really need to dive into the realness of um, how we operate every day. Yep. And um, one of the things I've noticed with myself is I've allowed myself over the last few years go into spaces of programming, which is um, what I call um, programming for you to act in whatever they want you to act. So I have paid lots of money. I come from the personal development community, which is you know, all these events and all these like rah, 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 motivational. And oh my God, if I have to hear another one, another person shouting shit into my face to try to drill it in, I will just vomit, right? Yeah. I have paid a lot of money just to study what happens to my heart as I sit there listening to repetition of telling me that there's something wrong with me if I don't do something. And in 2020, I made a decision because I've achieved success, not because I listened to people, because I made so many mistakes staying with who I fucking am and recovering from my own mistakes without anybody trying to tell me how to do something. Um, and I'm watching all these people out there looking for answers on the outside. When all we need to do is number one, be together as women to elevate one another, right? We yeah. can actually step away from the noise and sit in this community of three of us just right. being real because right. we do struggle with the same thing. After a while, I'm looking at something perfect. I don't know whether that's true or not. And after a while, I start questioning myself because if, if I keep hearing over and over and over again, it's your limiting belief. It's your limiting belief. It's your limiting belief. It's your, why don't you want to make money? Yeah. And I said, and I'm like, no, I don't see money in that way. I don't want to sell my soul for money. Why? And then after a while, it's like, shit, you fall into that trap and then you become the zombie and then you are controlled. But I created the steel rose movement last year because it's like, no, I'm, we're done with that as women. And I come from sales. I don't, you guys ever train? Yeah, sales? Sales. yeah. I got sales background. Oh, okay. Well, you'll know, Mary, we are trained that your no does not mean no. Right. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> wow, man. You think we have a problem with sex trafficking and human trafficking and rapes and whatever? It's not the men. Men are, they don't know what's going on. We have to stand in our truth. We have to help each other stay in our truth. Right. And I'm telling everybody here, whatever you see in social media, it's their agenda. You need to be so connected with your own agenda to be able to discern for yourself what is real, what is not for you. Everything out there is selling you. Oh, on every Everything. level. Everything. And Every the level. moment, yeah, the moment there's any money involved, question it. Yeah. That's all I have to say. 
Yeah, no, it's, it, it's kind of like, you know, marketing and advertising, you know, sex sells are just, you know, this will make you prettier, this will make you smarter, this will make you happier, this will make you, I mean, all that stuff, it, it's so bombarding. And it's to the point that, you know, even it's in my email, it's in my text, it's in my social media everywhere. And of course, you know, they're all tracking you. So as soon as I talk about, you know, I need to do a doctor's appointment, Alexa here right next to me is probably sending me tons of emails and, yeah. and every doctor in my social media feeds. And it's, it's disgusting. And I, you know, this is what I, I think Dev did another series today and Amy sent it to me and I responded, you know, like we are more than a selfie. I mean, you know, you come to Miami here at my pool and these women are like half naked, barely anything on, and they're taking pictures of their asses, you know, and it's, it's like a parade of selfies. And, and I feel so sorry for them because it's like they put all their value on the number of likes that they get. And I don't understand, you know, I, I remember my girlfriend saying, oh, you got to get in clubhouse, get in early, get a bunch of followers. I said, okay, so what are all those followers going to do for you? I mean, like, really, I, you know, that's the thing that's really making me crazy. And now what I love, like with Femme Foundry, uh, what Amy has done, she's taken away the likes. And now all of the, it's forced you to have a dialogue, which I think is brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, let's dig into this deeper. Let's have a conversation about it. But I am, you know, at first social media was, oh, good. I get to get in touch with high school friends I haven't seen in 50 years, you know? So some of that was a little bit nice. And then after a while, you know, I had stalkers. That wasn't so nice. And then all the advertisement, you know, trying to tell me that I need help in everything, you know, around the world. And then I'd actually run into some FOMO issues like, oh, I wish I was there. And in many cases, some of these people have never even been there, but they act like they've been there. <laughs> so it's like, well, you know, it's like we're creating anger, you know, like, look at me, I got this car, I got this house, you know, you know, money doesn't make you happy. Um, but a lot of people seem to think that it does. And, um, but it does get discouraging when you, when you'd like to go to Croatia and you're sitting in, at home in bed sick and you're thinking, oh, well, <laughs> but I just, uh, I don't know, there's good parts to it and then there's bad. And when I think about when Trump was on Twitter, that was so bad. And let me just tell you that my stress since he's been off has been flipping amazing. I mean, I feel like I can sleep at night. I don't have to have 24 <laughs> seven, like we're gonna have some war <laughs> show up my door the next morning. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of that where I feel a bit relieved that they are, I wish that they would almost like, you know, stock it more to make sure that some of these people that are th throwing forced, you know, false news, that they would shut it down or delete it, you know, because this, whole area of misinformation i mean anybody can be a journalist and a writer and 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 share things that are, aren't true but not everybody's got the time and the bandwidth to check everything out so i feel like there should be a you know like a you know something on that so anyway renee i'll turn it over to you i'm talking too much no it's fine no it's um well i use social media for what i do so being a singer songwriter influencer that's what they're called now apparently and I'm apparently a micro influencer because of the number of likes and it's all a bit confusing but you have a responsibility when you're in this position this is the thing um, you have to be very aware of what you say how you say it and the effect your responses and things and feelings have on others um, so I don't respond and just throw it out there I'm thinking about my audience, whoever they may be, and their cross section of people all around the world. And I always let them know it's my reflections. I say something like Rene Bird reflections. It's me thinking and just want to hear what you, what do you feel about it. It doesn't mean that what I'm telling you, you have to follow, but this is what it's done to me. Would it do the same thing to you? So that's the way I express myself. But when I do look across the board and look at other people, it's like a mammoth. I and it's crazy, the algorithms as well. I go on there and look. If I think of a baby, that's all I see on my feed. Babies, bougie oh. babies, this baby. Health things, hair. I see hair. It's quite interesting. They bombard you with whatever you might have just looked at briefly. But I realise that over this season, it's ramped up people on social media. I've never seen so much people on Instagram in my entire life. And I can't keep up with so many different facets of it. 
you have to be in the know, but I, I haven't got time to be constantly on TikTok, constantly on Reels, constantly on Instagram. I've had to pick a few and go, this is my space and this is where I sit. Because otherwise you can become overwhelmed by what are they posting, why are they posting, where they're going, why they're not going. And also the emotion of it, especially in the season when we had a lot going on in pandemic, people passing away, which was horrific. The Black Lives Matter movement, which was horrific. I had to almost pull myself away from social media because I was just constantly bombarded with so many ripples of emotion and then trying to then present myself to the world with all that emotion and not, and be aware that I still got to be in the loop of what's going on too. So yeah. I've got to know what's happening and what season it is. Is it Valentine's Day or is this happened or what happened last night on Twitter? Do I speak about it or do I not speak about it? And if I don't speak about it, is it wrong for me not to have my point? Because I'm an influencer yeah. and you can control you. Yeah. Literally can control you. So you've got to, when you are doing this and this is your platform and this is your space, you control your narrative and make sure you're authentic, but don't let it control you because it can very easily. And it's quite clever. You've got people who are marketing. I'm not a marketeer. I, I share what I feel and I share what I actually know and all I've tested. I don't just jump on the bandwagon with all loads of brands. Every brand that you hear me talking about, I've used or I know and I believe in. So that's important. But you can literally be bombarded with this and the big house and the mansion and the jet. Then it's like, whoa. And we speak about mental health, but people don't realize that's actually contributing to the lack of mental health and all the things because it's like you didn't get a like and then you didn't get a like we oh you got a like she got a like why does she get a like and then she's gone on holiday oh I'm in my house in COVID but they're in Dubai and can you imagine what it's doing to you on a day-to-day an hour by hour it can't be healthy so it's great because it's a great medium to see to share to care to experience to be in Miami even though you're not there but you've really got to be careful what you're absorbing and I say this I'm on it but I even have to take a step back. I do say to myself today, I'm not going to post at all, even though I'm supposed to, just to give myself some space to breathe. And then when I come back out, I'm saying something which makes sense because I can get consumed and it can come overwhelming for me. And that's my world, let alone for the consumers of it. Because people start looking at it and thinking, well, if she looks like that, why can't I look like that? Right. Or if she, her skin's like that, I'm not realizing there's filters not realizing whatever you see might not be what actually it is. So the responsibility that we have as the receivers of the information and the givers is really important. Yeah, you know, the other thing I was thinking, Renee, when you were talking about some of that, um, like for instance, if there's been some big upset or something that's going on in the world, and they, they look for these celebrities to say things like, well, we haven't heard from Obama or we haven't heard from Oprah. Like, I can imagine the pressure that they feel that, okay, what political direction are they going to take, right? So I can imagine that frustration. But I also look at it from, I think, more about the girls, quite frankly, and young teenagers and, and these kids who um, still don't have all their, you know, uh social skills and when they get bullied and how do they react and uh you know just the whole idea of um you know i don't look as pretty as that person or i mean i've seen some teenagers talking about the how many likes they got right and so you know the stuff that they would put together to try to make themselves get more likes you know kids that got killed from taking pictures of you know hanging off a cliff or whatever but it's 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 basically you know a very fake world in many ways and it seems that our egos are more attached to it and the hours that can be wasted i mean i every keeps telling me to come to the clubhouse and i'm i'm like i don't have time to listen to people talk i'm sorry but you know i've got a lot going on but it's there'll be more there'll be more clubhouses of the world there'll be more you know, ways to distribute content. I just want it to be useful. Like I look at what we're doing here with Global Women Talk and it's about giving education tools for women to be able to handle situations. Mm -hmm. To me, that's value, right? I mean, uh, I think those are the kinds of things that we need to spend more time 
from the planet in regards to what are we doing to help the planet or what are we doing to help humanity? Mm -hmm. And if we can use those media purposes for those reasons, I think it's all good. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Um, wow, that, that, what we're talking about is so powerful. It's so important. And speaking of tools, Mary, I, I guess I'll take it to that next level rather than I can go on and on and on about what goes wrong out there. But one of the solutions that I share with people that you need to carry with you through the noise because the noise is not going away. It's actually so much more powerful than us. That's why I call us diehard truth seekers need to come together. And so if you want to find clarity, make an intention to surround yourself by diehard truth seekers as well. Yep. Because we need to hold each other accountable to ourselves all the time right? I'm not holding you accountable to your goal. I'm holding you accountable to staying you all the time. Right. We have to anchor back to our truth. Mm -hmm. And it's so important as women, because we are, especially the younger, like you said, Mary, the, the, the teenagers. And also, I mean, for you, Renee, you being an influencer out there have a heavy responsibility like your breathing moment, you're analyzing it all the time. It's like, how am I making, I'm standing up there in front of the world. What am I, what's the ripple effect of everything I breathe, everything I say, everything I do. That's a heavy burden. That is a really heavy burden. And I know that because uh, I've had so many people come to me and say, Susan, you have influence, you have impact. You need to talk about the Chinese, the hate, the hate, Asian hate thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I cannot be dragged into the hate all day long. I really can't because that's not how I see it. I, I feel sad that the, now the Asians are getting looped into the, the shit that's going on, yeah. but, but I can't go on the bandwagon and hate everybody because man, these people that are haters, they need education too. And maybe they need a little bit, I don't know, but I just can't go and start fighting everybody because when you go down that road, right? So the best thing to do is question everything. Yeah. <laughs> and if it looks too good, it is. There's no filter here on Zoom. What you see of us is either just lip gloss so that I don't offend you by being too scary looking <laughs> or... <laughs> but, there is no filter here on Zoom. No, there is none. Yeah. There is none. There is yeah. none. It's a, uh, go ahead, Renee, I'm sorry. No, she's right. It, um, like you said about the burden, there's times I don't want to say anything about something that everyone's talking about. I just don't, I don't know what to say. And I, sometimes I haven't got enough information to say. Because what we're very good at, and everyone that has Instagram or socials, they have an opinion about something they actually don't even understand the whole story about. Exactly. They just react to what they see or what they think it is. And you actually could be misinformed. It happened a lot when it came to COVID. Everyone had an opinion of what COVID was, the vaccine was, whether it was, whether it wasn't, whether it was this. And literally, where are these, where's this information coming from? So when you do put, when you press send and you go post, you got to know that whatever you said is correct. Right. Not that you just heard it or someone else said it. So you're going to cut and paste. No, because how do you know what they said, what it was? Right. And we've got to be really careful that we're just not following fashion, as they call it, following like sheep. So everyone's just doing and you know, having their opinions based on actually where did it even come from in the first place? Right. So before you know, it's interesting. I think people like to be heard. You know, I think that's why Clubhouse is a little popular because I can speak and everybody's listening to me. And so social media is also like that avenue of when they're angry. Uh, Sheru's coming here. When they're angry you know, they want to lash out to everybody. And so being able to do that on social media is the way to do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like uh, uh, anger, anger and negative information seems to go out a whole lot faster than any positive information. So I, you know, and that's the upsetting piece. And, I, and I've had digital detoxes. I mean, I'll shut my phone off. I had one on Sunday. I think I was in bed all day Sunday. And I, I, you know, I stayed away from my social media and I only, you know, it was like I, I needed to shut down. Mm -hmm. But um, I think from a mental health perspective, you know, I think COVID has been a bit of a blessing in regards to sending us to our room and think about what we've done and, mm -hmm. you know, how we're living our lives. And I know I'm making a lot of changes. 
but I've, I've kind of kind of gotten to this point where I've like downsized and, you know, really simplified my life because I felt like my stuff owned me and I didn't want to be in that space anymore. I mean, for me, traveling and being around my friends, spending time with my friends was where I wanted to spend my time and wasting it on hours of social media to people. You know, it's like some people would connect with anybody and, and everybody. And I had no place for that. Right. I mean, uh, I like to have really good quality relationships and um, yeah, sometimes it's nice to know what people are up to in their lives, you know, but some of the stuff is I don't need to see what people eat every day. Chiru. Hello, everybody. We missed you. We're talking about social media. <laughs> Yes, I was so looking forward for this session because uh, social media is my work. My work is digital and I cannot leave social media because every day I have to sit and I have to do marketing, I have to do content, I have to do videos. So this is a concern topic because definitely it is affecting lives. In fact, day before yesterday only I was thinking how much good it will be if we are having a blockage on phone that no phone will work for at least two days and we block the social media forever for two days nobody is touching also and then it will be more relaxing for us and we will be more present and uh, what things we are missing because now when we see for last few years three four years what has happened suddenly everybody the plus points are definitely there that we are connected we are not able to meet people but we are connected we are aware what's happening but it's when it's getting overwhelming when we are checking every day and as the number of social media is increasing, my goodness, now we have Clubhouse also, which I have to still start. And then we have TikTok, <laughs> we have Insta, we have, I have few I have not touched at all. There are so many across the world and youngsters, especially they are everywhere. So I'm concerned how they are managing their time. The time management is the biggest concern. Plus the quality of life they are living, they are not aware about the importance of relationships because that personal touch has gone for the toss. I'm missing my tea times and my that like outings with the friends which we used to plan it like we were desperate to meet and we went outside we planned outside and we had some activity all those things are like okay when it was the last time and now definitely the COVID was there in between but certainly it has reduced because now everybody is busy so social media is definitely a concern for mental health because we are losing that human touch within ourselves we are somehow i think we are becoming more like robots every day it's getting a systematic routine where we are following all the activities and somehow i have to really talk to call people and talk to feel that okay i'm a human and i have to ask like okay how are you doing and uh, how can i help you all those things i have to plan it in my diary you know and that's so shocking you uh, we have to be mindful about these things because we get lost and time is just passing by so i think concern is there and it has to be managed with proper uh, management of time and maybe as mary said that detox is the best way so social media detox should be the activity plan maybe twice a week so that we are getting back to ourselves on our original authentic person and then we can establish the authentic relationship with others but you know what it's everything in balance right and i'm not anti social media because our business is in social media, so yes. you can't avoid it. I and cannot run away. No, and I was saying, to, I have a diehard anti-social media friend, and he just, he goes in the woods, and he does his thing, but he's in his 60s. You can do that, right? <laughs> so you can't be anti when you're at the time of your life where you can go into hiding, and that's it. So I always say to him, social media can be a gift or it can be a demon, right? I need, if I want to help the world, I need to go into social media where they're trapped, right? Mm -hmm. And this is how, and I'm telling you, the last two weeks, what I've been doing is creating different content, which is unscripted, right? Which is things like this. We hop on and we have a conversation in front of an audience and it's not scripted. We have no idea where it's going to go, okay. but... Um, the, the reception I've been getting from my crew of the, the, my, my party, my partners that I'm doing it with, they're like, oh my gosh, isn't they're like eating it up. They're like, they say they can listen to this all, like all day long because it's just conversation that organically rolls. Yeah. And it's right? so true. 
and it's authentic. It's not ego, right? And this is, I think, what's really important, um, what, what we're providing for women around the world, right? To be that little mouse in a room of women who have been there and done that. And those are the kinds of tools that more women need because everybody talks at the surface level of how great and brilliant they are, but they never talked about all the trash they had to go through to get there. And this is the piece that everybody is trying to survive. And there's not enough women that will help them through it. So uh, most of them we, are still there. What are you talking about? No, most yeah, of them you're are right. still there. <laughs> exactly. So if, if we can almost have conversations on every little kinds of subjects that you can imagine, and, and our conversations are floating around, you know, the planet for other women to see, I mean, you, you're going to make impact on women's lives that you don't even know. And for me, Thank that you. just, you know, that warms my heart in such a big way. Um, because it's, you know, we get caught up society, society puts us, wants to put us somewhere, you know, and this whole social media thing is, I feel like it's, it's harming our young girls um, to the point that they, that they don't know who they are. And they're trying to, I'm trying to look like Kim Kardashian, or I'm trying to, I mean, I see it here in Miami all the time. Everybody has hair down to their butts and have had, you know, butt and boob implant implants. And they do these selfies for their social medias. And, and that's, that's, their, that's how they live. And they're more than just that, right? I mean, women Thank have you. such amazing EQ to do great things, to you know, you. Either nurture kids or family or community, you know, to make an impact on the planet and humanity. So I just want to get them out of this selfie culture you know, and look at my food or look at my travel and look at how perfect I am and get into this real world of dialogue. I mean, that's why Femme Foundry, the mobile app is so important to us at Hera because we have to unite women. You know, we can't be in the way of each other. We have to support each other. And, and one of the things I, I made a conscious decision on social media, I've kind of pulled myself off of Facebook and Instagram. I'm like barely there, right? I spend more time on, on LinkedIn and, and Femme Foundry. But, you know, I've made a really conscious effort that I will never forward anything negative. If I post anything, it's positive. And it's, it's positive that it could help somebody else or give somebody information that would be, you know, positive to their life. Because I don't want to contribute to the trash. There's already too much out of it, too much out there. And, yeah. you know, people need to get out of that space because it's making them angry. And hence, I think why well, this, I mean, America's, not, you know, not in the best situation right now, but, you know, we had four years of somebody that didn't help us. So we're now trying to come out of that, but uh, anyway, that's, that's my two cents. No, very strong saying, and I so much agree, Mary, because I think showing vulnerability is something which every woman should accept it. Instead of showing the glorious, like you are perfect, you are having a very amazing life, that's not real that's all fake nobody can have all everything perfect in their life so once we start using social media sharing our vulnerabilities what are the challenges and those who have faced those challenges they talk about solutions it can be used so positively so youngsters and girls this message has to go that stop faking life there stop copying somebody you become the ceo of your life you become the heroine of the, your life you you are having everything in you. So start working upon your personal development and take yourself to the next level and think big in life. So that message has to reach to every girl on this planet, I suppose. Well, here's the question. I think this is an important question. I think I would love to hear each of your views on how do we deal with loneliness? Because when you're the lone wolf that's standing here and my empowerment is like, no, this is my truth. I'm not going to listen. But you seem to be the only one. How do you... How do you deal with just being the lone wolf, right? Well, I don't know. See, I don't understand loneliness from that perspective, maybe so. But I think when I look at all of us on the planet, we're all individual. We all have our own DNA. Sometimes we want to look like, have my, I want to have a haircut that makes me look like, you know, I don't know, share, you know. I mean, we all still kind of do those things, but... I think there's a point where we have to just stop and really embrace and everything about ourselves, what we love about ourselves. And one of the interesting uh, exercises I did one time, and it was 
pretty impactful. I made a list of a hundred reasons why I loved myself. And that can include everything from personality to education, to your toenails, you know? And, and I, and it was a really interesting exercise. And the thing is, is that, you know, it, it's, uh, we all have this uniqueness. Some people are going to like us and some people aren't. And I think if we really get to the authentic piece of us that this is me and this is who I am, you know, people may like me or not like me and that's okay. Right. But I need to really embrace and hug and love myself that I'm not bothered by what other people think. Who cares if they don't agree with me? Who cares if they don't approve the life I'm living? Because, you know, what you have to bring to the party is that you're that only person on this planet that, you know, and you have a gift. It's just a matter of finding that gift and honing in on it. And when you talk about loneliness, I think, you know, uh, for me, I've always, you know, like, you know, picked up the phone, called a family member or, you know, I'll reach out when I need to, you know, have a little bit of TLC or, you know, I need to talk. Will you listen to me? You know, I mean, sometimes you just say, okay, I'm calling you because I need to vent a little bit. And I want you to, you know, hear me. Right. (laughs) And of course, if the other person can just let you vent everything and not try to solve it, then, you know, you pretty much got what you needed. You didn't need it solved. You just wanted somebody to hear. And sometimes that's what social media is, is. There's a lot of people who are venting and uh, they're just angry and they got to get it out there you know that's okay and they're then they're kind of stuck in that little world of you know angry and venting and you know and I can I can tell you a couple of movie stars that that are venting on Twitter 24 7 and I'm like you know exactly what they're going to say it's like okay you're really in a stuck place so um, but I think it's a you know loneliness ah you know like I think about maybe people like are in a nursing home. Sometimes I think that they would be lonely, right? That their family's not around them. And, you know, I mean, cause getting older just sucks all the way around. I can't tell anybody. I don't think anybody would say, I love being 80. So, <laughs> you know, but I guess you, you just have to think it, that, you know, there's a child in all of us. And this is what I love. I mean, when you think about what you were like as a child, I love who I was as a child and I'm trying to embrace it as an adult as much as I can and have the Peter Pan effect and say, you know what? I'm not going to grow up. I'm just going to still love my child and I'll be responsible. You know, I'm not going to do anything stupid and mean or anything like that, but you know, my child and me, you know, that's, that's the authentic Mary. So. Oh, how about you, Mary? I have a year I and totally, yes, I totally agree with Mary. And what a beautiful mention that everybody has a unique gift. So people who are lonely, they have to navigate themselves better. And then they have to be confident about themselves that yes, that uniqueness can be used in so many ways. And in present time, there has to be more content because everybody is having some liking for some campaign or some issue. So there are so many ways to come out of that loneliness. You can support some cause. You can be part of the big groups uh, across the globe, which are running some campaign and voice out and do some activity to support. So there are various ways which make, can make you can make you come out of your loneliness. And once you are in the group which is like you, which is having the mindset like you, I think then loneliness will be something for the history. I love that. Renee? <laughs> yeah, loneliness. Um, it's funny, in COVID, I'm going to be honest, there's been moments of loneliness because I'm on my own, living on my own at the moment. I have another half that's across the waters. But I have got family and people around me, so I'm grateful for that. But I'll be honest, I've also just used that time to develop and grow, um, to get better, to, as you know, I developed Who Am I Talk over the pandemic. So I've just been learning and meeting people that I wouldn't have ordinarily met, which is fantastic. Right. So I think through something that might sound negative, it's actually been very positive for me. Um, and I don't mind me. I think is when I say that some people are not comfortable being on their own, but I'm okay with it. Of course, I've had moments of loneliness and that separation that you feel when you're not with someone you care about or just with your family or just because of COVID and things. But I can have a laugh. Like people might think I'm on my own here or with somebody. I will put music on dance. I will watch a comedy and be in stitches. I'm okay in my own space. And 
some people can't deal with that but I've said you know what if you don't like you then how on earth can anyone like you so I am glad I can do that and I'm glad I'm at a place in my life I can be with myself and be quite good about it and there's so much to do as she's explained Charu about you can be involved in a charity you can help with some causes so if you really stop and think about it there's no actually no excuse to sit there too much in loneliness if they get what I mean because there is people you can reach out to whether it be a, a, a Christian foundation whether it be a synagogue there's going to be somebody that you can connect with you don't have to be on your own and you might feel like you are but the great thing when I speak of social media there's so many ways to reach people now if you really want a social life you could sit on social media the whole day and you'll be connected to that person having an opinion clubhouse listening to that LinkedIn a webinar so if you really think about it there's spaces for you to be but what you have to do is make sure the spaces you're in are I would say feeding your soul not do the opposite because if it's, if it's not feeding your soul that loneliness and you're getting the negatives then you're in a real trouble yeah. so find those spaces well-being meditation whatever to make you feel good and balanced that's my thing yeah. I think for such people, uh, social media can be uh, a gift to manage their mental health better way. So here it can be used in a positive way. Mm. It does. I mean, there's an infinite amount of information out there. Like it, it, like it, it, you just, it, you can be consumed and lost in somebody else's world, in another world. So I, I, I feel like I'm a combination for all of you because one of the things that I really have to always remember is what is it that I want in my life? Mm -hmm. And it's so, I mean, if you have to put a reminder on your phone every hour to ping and say, what do you want, Susan? What do you, cause it's a reminder all the time. We have to really remind ourselves, what is it that I want? Hold on, let's just stop. Because what we want um, will dictate what we see right and it's like driving a car right if you're driving a car and you just put your head like that guess where the car goes it will always go where you look and it's the same thing in life so i always have to focus on what is it that i want no actually no i want to be this right and i stand in this this is what i want so then all of a sudden when you go into social media you're going to see what serves you and what you want i think that's the easiest way to really stick with an agenda that's personal. And the other thing is that's really worked for me because I mean, I, I, I can be all over the place is I make sure that the people that are closest to me represent who I want to become. Right. Pure and simple. Who you Pretty surround important. yourself by yep. is going to dictate where you're going to go. Exactly. You're as good as the five people around you. Yep, that's all that you need to remember. It's funny, as a Caribbean upbringing, um, third generation, so my grandparents are from Caribbean Jamaica, there's a saying and it says, show me your companies will tell me who you are. Yeah. Now that can be in a positive or it can be in a negative, but yeah. you'd be very surprised if you're for around a certain type of people, you know, we can speak, racism, prejudice is not taught from birth. It's your environment, it's what's being fed into you that enables you to feel that way. You are not born that way, it's just not. You see the babies together, they're kissing, grabbing, pulling, and it's just the environment that will cause that. So you have to be very careful and intentional about your environment, what you're feeding into your soul, the people that you're around. I have this thing about, are they adding or they're subtracting? Yeah. Yep will add into you or subtract and if you really stopped and thought about it yep you'll find a lot of people take and they don't even mean to do people ring you and see how you are not right. what you're doing how right. are you are you okay Renee right. I've been thinking about you this what's going on are you right darling yep. you will be surprised how much people actually just take and they don't realize they're doing it right. so just be really intentional about your sur your surroundings and who's feeding who's breathing life into you is social media breathing life into you or is it subtracting? Do you feel terrible when you come off the Instagram? If, if that's what's happening, you need to stop looking at that particular thing. Is you it see, empowering you? What yeah. you're saying is so important because us as women are not taught to measure things. 
And we come from business. to measure things or not yes. to measure things? Everything has to be measurable, right? We come from business. So I come from the business world. So everything is measured. You measure your progress based on your results. But in life, we're not taught that. Measure everything. If you're not feeling good, measure what you're doing. Like if you're spending five hours on Clubhouse, yes, you feel the addiction and the euphoria, you're drinking the Kool-Aid, but measure what gain you're getting from it. Right, right, right. We don't measure. Measure the love that somebody's giving you or versus they're abusing you. Like weigh it out. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, I kind of create like circle of friends, right? So I've got my, my inner circle and then the circle, and then I've got the circle here and everybody else doesn't count <laughs> and they, they can move in and out. Right. But, you know, it, it's always about, you know, people teach you who they are. Right. And so, you know, that the ones that are, you know, authentic and healthy and happy, you know, those are the people you surround yourself with. But and the other one, you're kind to them, you're kind to them, but you don't need to be necessarily, you know, calling them every day. So, but, you know, I feel like, you know, you get what you give. So if you give love and if you give positivity, it'll all come back to you. But what's really important is that the love is in the giving, not the receiving. Beautiful. Secret. That's a secret. Yes. Yeah. And the intention behind the giving is it through guilt or because you really want to? Because you really it's want to. So give. huge. The intention. Am I giving you because I feel guilty? But that's not giving. No, that's not giving. That's not giving. So everything giving has is, to be measured, right? And, and giving, it's important to give what they need and not what you want to give them. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's giving so is what true. they need. And also giving and not expecting anything back. I think exactly. Yeah, you just got to sometimes yeah. be able to say, this is what I, I give this to you. And if you don't give it back or if you don't say thank you, I've still done it from a genuine heart. And, you know, it's not easy, but you've got to do it with a genuine heart. Um, and you know, you've done the best you can. And that's kind of it. There's nothing else you can do. You can't go, oh, I can't believe you. Because actually then it wasn't, it wasn't sincere. And it's hard for us to do that because you actually want someone to go, by the way, maybe, did you see that? But the way the world is and the way the universe works, you just give. And as I say, the world is round. You'd be surprised. It always comes back in different forms of it's blessing. So cool. it yeah, it's life. so cool. I'm grateful hey, for how that. about if I believe the world's flat? <laughs> well, you, know. No, you can do that all day long. <laughs> maybe it is. Who knows? No, <laughs> Not that I've seen it. Maybe, but hey. I do believe in this. Yeah, I always believe in the power of intention and power of choice in my talks. I always mention that it's, it's such a strong power because that power of choice every woman can use in her favor. Mm -hmm. Once you get, start getting mindful, what choices you are making in life. Like at Women Lines, I always see uh, women are what they read and what they eat. So this is the power of choice you will make in your life, what you are reading, what you're watching, which circle you are in. All these things matter a lot. Same way social media is there. So power of choice comes for social media. Just be mindful about the time you're spending, which tribe you are moving. And are you authentic or not? That power of choice can really balance you and keep you away from mental health problems. Yep. Yep, totally. Well, ladies, we're kind of at the top of the hour. So I, I just want to respect everybody's time. So does anybody else have anything to share? Okay, well, <laughs> let me just close out this TV channel and then we can chat for a second if you don't mind. So anyway, I'm for our um, Global Talk Women um, viewers, we really enjoyed this hour and I hope that you got some nuggets of information that would be value to you yep. because we want women around the world to be happy and successful yes. and strong. So <laughs> thank you for watching us. We'll, we, we will have another episode next month. So stay tuned. You never know what it'll be about, but it'll be important. So thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.